Exercise 14. Genesis Gifts reports the following current year data for its only product. The company uses a periodic inventory system and its ending inventory consists of 420 units, 140 from each of the last three purchases. We're asked to determine the cost assigned to ending inventory and a cost of goods sold using each of the four methods, beginning with specific identification. Ending inventory consists of 420 units, 140 from each of the last three purchases. When we extend the dollar amounts, 140 multiplied by 240 is 336, 140 multiplied by 220 is 308, and 140 multiplied by 190 is 266. The value of ending inventory is 910. The remaining units and the remaining dollars are expensed as cost of goods sold. The 2,650 units sold include the 280 units from beginning inventory at 280, 560 units at 270, 700 of the units purchased on July 28th at 240, 1,000 units of the 1,140 units purchased on October 3rd, and 110 of the 250 units purchased on December 19th. When we extend the dollar amounts, cost of goods sold equals 784 plus 1,512 plus 1,680 plus 2,200 plus 209. Total cost of goods sold 6,385. Using the weighted average method, we calculate cost per unit by taking total cost of goods available for sale $7,295 and dividing by total units available for sale 3,070 units. This gives us an average of $2.376 per unit. Ending inventory consists of 420 units, each of which is valued at $2.376 per unit. Ending inventory is $998. Cost of goods sold is 2,650 units at $2.376 per unit. Cost of goods sold, 6297 Using periodic FIFO, the 2,650 units expensed as cost of goods sold are the first 2,650 units owned. Units are expensed in chronological order. The 2,650 units sold consist of the 280 units at $2.80 per unit, plus 560 units at $2.70 per unit, plus 840 units at $2.40 per unit, plus 970 of the 1,140 units purchased on October 3rd. This expenses a total of 2,650 units. When we extend the dollar amounts, 280 units at 280 per unit is 784. 560 multiplied by 270 is 1,512. 840 multiplied by 240 is 2,016. And 970 multiplied by 220 is 2,134. Total cost of goods sold, $6,446. The remaining 420 units are in ending inventory. The 170 units remaining from the October 3rd purchase at 220 per unit, plus 250 units from December 19th at $1.90 per unit. Ending inventory equals 374 plus 475. The value of ending inventory is 849. Using periodic LIFO, the 2,650 units expensed are the last 2,650 units acquired. We start at the bottom and count backwards until we've accounted for 2,650 units. 250 units at $1.90 per unit, 1,140 units at 220, plus 840 units at 240, plus 420 of the 560 units acquired on March 7th expenses a total of 2,650 units. Total cost of goods sold, 420 multiplied by 270 is 1,134. 840 multiplied by 240 is 2,016. 1,140 multiplied by 220 is 2,508. And 250 multiplied by 190 is 475. Total cost of goods sold, 6,133. The remaining 420 units are in ending inventory. 280 units from beginning inventory at 280 per unit, plus 140 units acquired on March 7th at 270 per unit. Ending inventory is 784 plus 378 for a total of 1,162. 
Requirement 2 asks us to determine which method yields the lowest net income. The lowest net income is realized when we have the highest amount of expense. The highest expense in this case is $6,446, cost of goods sold using periodic FIFO. The Genesis company is experiencing declining prices. As a result, FIFO will yield the highest cost of goods sold amount. The highest cost of goods sold in a period of declining prices would be the earliest units.